today we will see introduction to cloud storage models cloud computing is a transformative computing paradigm that involves delivering application and services over the internet what exactly cloud computing is whenever we are studying about iot applications huge number of data is going to generate and to store that data again huge storage space will be required so it is very difficult to store those iot generated data to store on local system for that purpose cloud application or various cloud services can be used for storing iot generated data so what exactly cloud is or what is cloud computing it is a one type of your computing technology where different applications and services can be provided to the users over the internet so if we want to access some cloud computing services very first thing that must be required while accessing your cloud computing services will be internet without internet it is very difficult to deal with cloud computing services so in case of cloud computing services various applications and services can be accessible over the internet only various and some of the popular cloud storage models are web application messaging protocol that is your wamp zively platform as a service that is your pass cloud which will going to provide various services for developing iot applications and again one of the famous and important cloud is your amazon web services aws and various iot applications deployed over aws here we will see these cloud storage models in detail communication apis are again one of the important point that needs to be study because whenever you need to deal with iot application there should be proper communication between various devices unless and until there is proper communication between different devices in the network data will not transmit properly between various nodes all those cloud models are rely on different communication api these communication api facilitate data transfer control information transfer from application to cloud one service to another and so on so the task of communication api will be it will going to support data transmission or transferring data from one node to another node it will again focus on controlling various information that is related with your transmission of data and different services required for data transmission that will be the part of your what communication api it also exists in the form of communication api this communication api will support rpc pubsub and wamp rpc stands for remote remote procedure calls pubsub is nothing but your public publish and subscribe model and wamp is nothing but your web application messaging protocol for example restful api that we already discussed in one of the session that this particular restful api is an example of your one of the iot communication api another is your django web framework which is used for implementing your iot application in python that can be treated as your communication one of the important communication api for iot application development so we will start with first communication api or we will start with first cloud storage model that is your wamp stands for web application messaging protocol wamp stands for this is full form this wamp is a sub protocol of web socket which provides public subscribe model and remote procedure call messaging pattern so this wamp is going to support two different activities public subscribe model 
this publish subscribe model and rpc will be the two types of technologies that can be used and with the help of this technology this vamp is developed that is your web application messaging protocol the name itself suggests that it is one type of your protocol which will work on web applications and useful for messaging activities there will be one transport in case of your public subscribe model this transport is nothing but the channel that connects two peers there will be one session between these two peers that is your session this session is nothing but conversation between two peers that run over the transport there will be client those client are nothing but your if you can see in the diagram there is one client and there is one router this is what the transport is and there will be the session this session is nothing but conversation between two peers that runs over the transport so one peer is your client and second peer is router when there will be the communication between this client and router this communication will be takes place by this session and transport is responsible for connecting this two channels there will be the client that client is nothing but it will have one or more roles so client can be work as publisher client can also be work as your subscriber client can also be work as caller and client can also be work as callee so these are different roles of single client it depends on whether it is your publish subscribe model or whether it is your remote procedure call whereas different roles of router will be it will either work as dealer or it will either work as your broker let us see these roles in detail in publish subscribe model client can be it can be either publisher so publisher it will publishes various events to the topic maintained by the broker broker will going to maintain some topic and those topics will be subscribed by this particular publisher and it is one of the role of your what client so client can be treated as publisher in case of your publish subscribe model again that client can also be treated as a subscriber and a subscriber subscribes to the topic and receives the event through your what various payloads so either it can be publisher that will going to publish the event or it can be the subscriber that will going to subscribe to different topics these are the roles of client in case of your publish subscribe model if you remember previous diagram in case of remote procedure call model client can be either callee or it can be caller if that client is a caller then it will going to issue call to the remote procedure along with call argument remote procedure is nothing but there will be one procedure implemented on one system and that particular procedure must be accessed from another system through network that is nothing but accessing or calling procedure remotely procedure will be implemented on system a there will be system b system b will going to access procedure written on system a through network or through internet that is nothing but your remote procedure call if you divide this in different words remote means what accessing remotely that is from different location procedure means some procedure some algorithm some function and call means what calling that particular procedure that is nothing but your remote procedure call so caller will be responsible for calling remote procedure along with some arguments that is client can be treated as either your what caller or this client can be treated as callee also this callee will going to execute the procedure to which the calls are issued by the caller and returns the re result back to the caller as i told you there will be two system system a and system b so system a has procedure implemented and system b is another system system b will going to call system a 
and it will going to execute the process available on system A. Whatever procedure will going to execute on system A, the result will be transmitted to system B because that particular system will going to call remotely and that procedure will be accessed remotely. So this result will be received to the caller because B will be treated as caller because it is going to call and A will be treated as your callee because it will going to listen to caller. So in case of your RPC client can be treated as either caller or it can be treated as call E. Second part in that particular diagram was router. So router are peer that perform generic call and event routing. So whenever there will be some data or there will be some packet that needs to be transmitted between two devices, one of the important hardware or one of the important aspect that will be used will be your router. That router will be helpful for routing process for transmitting data from one device to another device. In publish subscribe model, router has the role of broker. So in case of your publish subscribe model, if we are thinking about publish subscribe model, router will be treated as what broker. It will going to route the messages that are published to topic to all subscribers subscribe to that given topic. So in case of your broker, it will going to route the messages to all the topics of all the subscriber. Let's say there are, there is one router and there will be 10 subscriber. So what that broker will going to do that broker will going to route that particular message to all the subscriber for which this particular topic has been subscribed. This is the task of your what broker. Whereas in case of your RPC model, router will be treated as your broker. The role of broker will be, it will be either treated as your dealer, which will act as router. It will going to route RPC calls from caller to callee and routes result from callee to caller. In case of your RPC model, when a router will be treated as broker, as a dealer and it will going to call the procedure returns in return. It will going to return your what result. This is what the task of dealer is. There will be some application code. This application code will always be run from client side. It will always be at client side and that client side will be responsible for execution of all the type of application code that is available on client side. That client can be either publisher, it can be either subscriber, it can be callee or it can be your what caller. This is what your first cloud storage model that is your VAMP. Second one is Zively Cloud for IoT. It is commercial platform as a service for your IoT. It is first thing it is commercial. You need to pay for this. It is your platform as a service that is your pass specifically designed for IoT applications. It supports hundreds of platforms, millions of gateways and billions of smart devices. This Zively cloud will going to support hundreds of platform. It will have hundreds of platform. It will have millions of gateways and it will going to support or it will going to connect billions of smart devices to IoT application. It is comprehensive and secure infrastructure service. It is one type of your online development tool and development center. So this is what your cloud and this cloud will have some Zyli application installed over there. There will be some kind of customer backend services. There will be some application and other connected objects. So all those things will be connected with Zively API and this particular Zively API will be connected with your those Zively cloud and these API will have your restful application various sockets will be there and it will run on your MQTT type of protocol. It will go into access various data services, business services through your what one common bus. This is what Zively cloud for IOT. 
it is your iot cloud platform it is an enterprise platform for building managing and deriving business value from connected product it is one type of your platform which is enterprise in nature and the task of that particular zively cloud in case of your enterprise platform will be for building managing and deriving business value it also provides the cloud based api ki with the sdk this particular zively cloud will going to again support various platforms and technologies like android arduino c etc zively is your pass which exposes its service via restful api we discussed in previous diagram that this zively will be your what platform as a service which will be supported by your restful api and it will be based on mqtt protocol it supports messaging service based on mqtt so this is what related with wan and zively cloud platform for your iot application development then next one is your python web application framework that is django framework this django is an open source web application framework for developing web application in python if you wish to implement iot application using python this django framework is there and it will have very good facilities that can be used for iot application development and this development will be based on your python a web application framework is a collection of solution packages and best practices that allows development of web application and dynamic website this is what the general definition of web application framework is that is it is nothing but the collection of different solutions packages and best practices all those solution packages and best practices will be useful for development of various web application and dynamic website if you wish to develop some web application or if you wish to implement some dynamic website in that case you must use various web application framework django is based on model template view architecture and provides separation of data model from business rules and user interface this particular django framework is based on your what model template and view so these are three components of django framework and it will be based on your what data model for business rules and designing user interface it provides unified api to a database backend thus web application built with django can work with different databases without requiring any code changes so let's say if you have implemented any application using django and you want to connect that particular application with different databases in that case you can easily connect various databases with django without disturbing your already implemented code it is dynamic in nature so that according to database platform this django will be modify the code by itself you do not have to change the code based on database with the flexibility in web application design combined with the powerful capabilities of python language and python ecosystem django is best suited for cloud application so if you are thinking to implement iot application in that case you must use what django why because of its flexible in nature and powerful capabilities of python language as this django will going to support python and python has n number of built in functions built in apis and it will have very strong ecosystem django is very much popular for iot application development it consists of an object relational mapper a web templating system and a regular expression based url dispatcher 
this is what django will have number 1 it will have object relational mapper web templating system and regular expression based url dispatcher django architecture again as we have discussed it is based on your model template view so what is model it act as definition of stored data and handles interaction with database in a web application data can be stored in relation database non relation database in xml file etc so data can be stored in multiple locations like it can be either stored in your relation database non relation database in xml file in that case that data will be properly communicated with iot application django model is python class that outlines variables and methods for particular type of data this is what the model is second one is template in typical django web application template is simply an html page with few extra place holders if you are talking about template it is nothing but your html page that can be implemented for controlling your iot application django's template language can be used to create various forms of text file either in xml with the help of emails csa javascript csv etc and last one is your what view the view ties the model to the template the view is where you write the code that actually generates the web pages so view is the place where you are going to write the code and view is responsible for generating various web pages written in template with the help of your xml css javascript this is what django architecture is which is based on model template and view